Oh no. What shall I do? Oh, Andrew, I'm so sorry. I like thistles, you know. Funny that. Prickly. Not a very lovable plant. Or is it a flower? So soft. So silky. Feels relaxing. Don't think he ever relaxed. Not ever. Sort of feel a bit sexy. <laughs> oh gosh, he certainly wasn't ever sexy in his life. No. Nothing lasts forever. But sometimes that's a blessing. I like your flowers. <laughs> now I don't know whether to laugh or cry. You must think I'm mad. He's been dead a year today, and it's his birthday. Seventy. He would have been seventy. Shame. Fun season. Wintry, I suppose. Maybe. But not funny for him, actually. I don't suppose he's laughing now. Well, maybe he is. Laughing, I mean. I wanted to visit his grave as I normally do. And I usually have to have some special flowers to bring. The florist said I needed some late bloomers. Let's see. Um, <laughs> and some thistles, uh, prickles. Yeah. And something white. The light white. Clean. Tidy. Just white. Some purple thistles and a tartan ribbon. Tartan, you say? Was he Scotch then? Hence the thistles? Oh, oh, no, 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 but he did like a bit of Edinburgh Rock or some Scottish shortbread with his cup of tea. Yes, he liked to bick it with his cup of tea. And anyway, uh, Scotch the drink, uh, Scots the people, you know? <laughs> Though he did like a drink of whiskey. He used to collect those pretty little biscuits. You know, the ones you get with your tea and M&S, as well as other places. Only if they were shortbread. And free. He liked anything for free. I, I don't think he ever thought about it. Well, I'm sure he looks down on you lovingly. <laughs> I was going to say, do you come here often? But it sounds too much like a chat at line. <laughs> well, an English chat at line anyway. Don't go just yet. Stay a while. I know it's cold, but you know what they say here in England. <laughs> a bit of fresh air does you good. Come on, have a coffee. I always pack a flask and a snack when I come out sketching. Here you go. Thank you. It's quite a favorite place of mine here. 
It's... It's marvelous. Well, I had things to do. And, and though it is always dead quiet here, I... Don't you think it seems wrong to eat and drink here? It's a place of rest. I mean, with the deceased. Coffee. Strong, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it makes me thirsty. I could do with a cup of tea, really. Oh, coffee's all right, isn't it? And I'm so glad you had some to share. Just I take it. Oh my, that's beautiful. A seed of friendship can be planted in any season, and given time and effort, it will blossom. <laughs> oh yes, we, we should do the music event. I love going to them. Oh, it's so lovely having new friends. Oh, I mean, a new friend. You. Oh, I've never had a friend before. <laughs> oh, yes, I mean your friendship, Lana. It's lifted me up. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes, I, I should come to your house sometime soon. Mm. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, I know. I know. Who would have thought Andrew would lead me to a new friendship? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, oh uh, look, I, I must dash, but uh, I'll see you at the music event later, Lana, dear. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, I just love this snow. As time goes on, even in harsh conditions, growth will happen, and people who connect can see a spark of light in their dark winter days. Warmth between Lana and Grace was apparent to those around them. Their depth of friendship and caring, even if they themselves didn't quite see its importance. Love is like a secret, longing just to give itself away. Well, memories might come and go too soon. You and I can watch the flowers bloom People are going to respond to being shouted out through the walls, dear. Oh, well, maybe I should go. I find tension very stressful. Oh, the neighbours must be a real problem. They seem to have pushed your buttons. You look angry. Ah, oh, come on, Grace. These people are animals. They party all night, they make noises all day. Especially if they know I'm at home. 
It's obvious these people don't like me because of who I am. No, what I am. What do you mean, Lana? Who you are? I mean, are you a Russian spy or an American spy or something? Oh, I'm sorry, that sounds so absurd, but I never did hear why you live here. Well, not in this house. I mean, here in England. I know very little about your life in general. You're a closed book, Lana. Whereas I, well, I've spoken of my Andrew. Forty years of marriage. No children. He didn't want any. No children, he said. Just our careers. And no real friends. He didn't want any of those either. He didn't want us, or rather me, to have anyone else in our lives. Well, all I know about you is your name is Lala Karanova. I think you're 55. You live here. Well, no one else would. And you enjoy your job as an artist and teacher. You never did say if you've been married or whatever. I mean, have you? Have you any family? Any relationships? Yada, yada, yada. I, I really do not know. Well, what do I say? Or rather, what should I tell you, Grace? Feels like an interrogation all of a sudden. I like us as friends, you know? Shooting the breeze, sharing good coffee. Now you've come to appreciate the taste that is. <laughs> I thought we were fine as we were, you know. Well, irritation aside, I suppose, here goes for what it's worth. <laughs> Do we really need to know about each other? Really? Do we? Nice, huh? Mm. A present from one of my pupils at my out for beginners class. <laughs> Well, firstly, I'm not important or unique. A bit of a wallflower, actually. A subtle weed. Not wanted, really. My folks were indeed of um, Russian origin. and They came to live in the We Love Everybody good old U.S. of A. in November 1963. I was born later that year. American, but dual national Soviet. Mother Russia didn't like to lose anyone. Have you always been so, so graceful, Grace? Well, I couldn't really say, could I, Lana? I, I don't really know. I, I think I, I've always been quiet and very placid. Flaccid, Andrew used to say. And certainly, as a child, very reserved. I was a diligent scholar and, and then a very dutiful wife. But what's the relevance of that, Lana? Please do continue. It's good to hear you speak of your life. Well, I just feel like such a slob, like a goddamn hobo slob. And I have such rough manners. I don't have your English rose good looks. <laughs> I've got long hair, often uncombed, and paint everywhere. I don't have your polite, polished manners, Grace. So why do you like me? I wonder. What is our connection? Don't you have any women's institute friends? You know, people with real pearls and smack clothes and say, please. And Thank you. Oh, and I couldn't possibly, darling. Well, don't you, Grace? Hmm? Oh, Lana, why are you being so awful and rude? What's wrong with you? I'm sorry, Grace. I don't know what's wrong with me. I love seeing you. And I feel so connected to you. Beyond the chatter, almost spiritual way. But I, I feel so fragile in your company. Like I'm naked. Jeez, like I'm goddamn naked. I just can't explain it. Oh, please, Lana, let's just forget it. Just continue the story of your life for me, would you? 
Oh, come on now, let's not fall out. It's such a valuable thing to me is our connection. If I was upset, my mother used to call me her little flower. What's wrong, little flower, she used to say. So, come on, my little flower. Just drink your coffee. I don't care who you are. I feel an affection for you. So please, just relax. <laughs> My God, Grace, where did that come from? <laughs> I could never imagine you winking in a zillion years. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> See what I mean? I'm no lady die, that's for darn sure. <laughs> Please accept my apologies. <laughs> oh, wow. My folks settled and they enjoyed living in New York. And I went to the public school in. <gasps> oh, Lana, so you had a good upbringing. Was it like our Eton boarding school, but for wealthy girls? <laughs> You crack me up, Grace, you really do. Public school is just that. It's a state-funded thing, a free-for-all. The children gave me hell. They call me Sweat. Very cruel of them. My full name is Svetlana Karanova. My mother, she died shortly after we arrived, and my father, he did his very best to look after me and work. <sighs> So perhaps I wasn't the cleanest kid in the school, but it really tore me up being called sweat, or sweat, as they made it sound. And my papa went and he did his very best. He really did. And I felt so abandoned by my mom. Shh. It's okay now. Not the first time you met, eh? Me crying, you being so caring, and and understanding. I felt so abandoned and alone at that time too. And then you came along and I, I felt rescued, saved, hopeful. You liked my flowers, I recall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Grace. You make everything sound so. We were meant to meet. I agree. I can't believe it's been a whole year. Yep. Four seasons. Classy music for classy lady. <laughs> <laughs> You're so talented. I wish I could draw like that. I have no ability. Oh, in that area anyway. <laughs> you have plenty of talents. And you're so still and graceful. <laughs> like a swan. Full of grace. Amazing grace. <laughs> Let me draw you. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> go on. It'll be fun. <laughs> you get to be still and gorgeous. <laughs> like, no, oh, whatever. <laughs> Just lean back, look into the distance, and think of something that you really, really want. Something that you just can't live without. That's the look. I feel... I need... That's the look. Lovingly. Gorgeous. Just one. You're so beautiful. I don't know why I didn't notice before. But you're breathtaking. Like a gorgeous white winter rose. A bloom. A late flowering. Mm. Well, memories might come and go too soon. 
you and I can watch the flowers bloom.